World Contraceptive Day is being celebrated today and uh, it's a day to mark the milestone um, the world globally and uh, individual countries, the milestone countries like Kenya have made towards um, enabling women, uh, including adolescent girls and young women, to access and use contraceptives, um, which would enable them to get children when they want to have children, and also to get the desired number of children. So, uh, so as Kenya, we are celebrating this day to mark um, the uh, contraceptive preference rate, which is close now to 60%, meaning 60% of, close to 60% of Kenyan women are using contraceptives. And um, so as PS Kenya, we are marking and celebrating uh, this day because of the milestones we have uh, achieved in enabling Kenya women to access um, comprehensive information on contraceptives and actually to go a step further and provide uh, these services where women can access and uh, use contraceptives um, uh, when they want to. So overall, SPS Kenya, we target adolescents and youth to use contraceptives and um, each year we reach over 60,000 youth with actual contraceptive <coughs> method. Adolescents beginning 15 years to youth up to 24, um, 24 years. So we provide close to 60,000 um, adolescent and youth with contraceptive methods through our Tunza Social Franchise Network. So, um, so why we do this is to give women power, to give uh, women the power and youth the power to plan for, for their future. And that's why, that's where Kitu Nikukachora comes in, to enable women to plan for their future, to achieve their future dreams and their access um, by giving them the freedom to get children when they are ready and to get the number of children they would want to. Okay. So there are several messages we use to reach teenagers. Um, data shows that uh, uh, by 18 years, um, half of our teenagers have already started having sex by 18 years. So there are categories, there are those who abstain, and we do reach them in school with message to abstain and to delay fast sex uh, until a later age. But still there are, there's that 50% who are sexually active. Um, so the sexually active, we uh, reach them in the community, in health centers, with information, comprehensive information about uh, contraceptives, how they can access these contraceptives and how they can use and what would work, would work for them. So we cater for all the, all the, all, all the, we, we cater for all uh, our target audience, those who abstain, we, abst we reach them in school with abstainers message. Those who are sexually active, we reach them with comprehensive information on contraceptives and how they, where they can access, how they can use these contraceptives. Some of the myths I've heard is that contraceptives cause infertility. None of the, con the truth is actually none of the contraceptives cause infertility. I've also heard the myth um, that contraceptives can cause cancer. None of the contraceptive method is um, attributed to cancer. Uh, I've heard also some people say that if you use contraceptive, well, a, a young lady uses contraceptive, it's a show that they are promiscuous, they are not faithful to their partners, but that's not the case. So because um, promiscuity and uh, being unfaithful to um, partners comes with mistrust and not understanding each, each other. So we know these contraceptives um, have some side effects like the hormonal contraceptives can cause weight changes, um, they can cause changes in bleeding patterns and they can cause mood swings and so on and so on. That's why there are a variety of contraceptive methods. So we 
encourage women if they experience any of the side effects then they can visit a health facility and they will be guided accordingly to use contraceptive method which do not give them the side effects they are currently experiencing so there are myths and the myths um, are not true um, contraceptives do not cause infertility they do not cause barrenness they do not cause cancer and uh, so those should be shunned and they are not they are not true but the side effects can be addressed um, in health facilities and when a woman attend a health facility then they can get guidance on what contraceptives would have minimal uh, side effects on them so there are morning pills um, they can be also referred to emergency contraceptive pills or some people refer them to as p2 because it's it's, it's a pack of two pills uh, so they are basically emergency pills uh, which should be taken only during cases of emergency. Maybe after rape, um, maybe during sexual activity there has been a condom passed, only during emergency cases. Um, so I am aware that um, this is one of the common method among um, sexually active adolescent girls and, and young women. And the thing is, um, so there is sex happens and then they were not protected so they ran for the e-pill so my advice to them would be um, so to avoid this there are other regular methods which they can use uh, regularly uh, so the emergency pill should not be used um, uh, after every other day because they should not be used every every other time simply because they contain very high hormones level and may end up disrupting the hormonal levels in a woman body so if in a relationship there is multiple sexual partners there is uh, promiscuity there is unfaithfulness then uh, condom must be part of the contraceptives why i say condom must be part of the contraceptives because the other contraceptives have a higher success rate in preventing pregnancy so the condom would work to prevent hiv and sti and then the other method would work to prevent uh, pregnancy because they are more effective in preventing pregnancy than the condom. So if the fertilization does not occur, then the woman, um, the woman sheds uh, the nutrients and the blood which, were, which were to nourish the baby that would have been produced. But because the baby was not fertilized, then the uterus sheds out the blood. What these hormones do is that um, they make the uterus wall to become thin. Uh, does not, uh, it does not thicken, it does not increase blood flow, it does not increase the nutrients in the uterus. So at the end of the month, because the human is using the method, then the woman does not have anything to lose. There are no toxins build up, there are no toxins in the body of the woman, and therefore it does not cause, um, uh, uh, it should not cause an alarm if a woman misses periods because of using a method. Actually, I've seen some women who are happier that way because every other month they do not have to worry about the bleeding, they do not worry about the buying pants, added expense, the menstrual cramps, and so on and so on. So in summary, there is no harm to worry if a woman misses periods because of using an hormonal contraceptive method.